to keep moving right along to trauma because I got to cover, unfortunately, you got kidneys, ureters, bladders, and a urethra. So I got to cover them all. Renal trauma is the number one. Those kidneys seem to get hurt the most. They get the guys who get the, the people who get this the most are the young guys, age 20. Makes sense. You're invulnerable at age 20 as a guy. I thought I was. Um, didn't have a renal trauma, but you know, that's, that's a guy thing. Motor vehicle accidents, falls, those you know, football injuries, kidneys take a beating. We can classify renal trauma on a grade of one to five. I don't like looking at words. I like looking at pictures. So grade one is just outside the kidney, subcapsular hematoma, a contusion without extrav, without renal injury. Laceration of less than one centimeter, so a slight cut into the kidney, the same other symptoms. Grade three, that now becomes greater than one, so we can see it's a deeper cut, but again, there's no extravasation. Excuse me, we get to grade four, laceration with deep extension, extravasation, bleeding. We can see this one's really getting in there deep. And then we get to grade five, oftentimes the artery and the vein are, are actually dissected from the injury. The kidney's a mess, it's cut up in different places. That's the one that it's gonna to go to surgery for sure. Some of these other ones can be uh, watched. So etiology again, gunshot wounds, stab wounds, but how many of that we cause? Needle biopsy, nephrostomy tubes, percutaneous nephrostomies, all cause trauma. Um, auto accidents, falls for blunt trauma, major contact sports, and oh yeah, our friend the shockwave. How many have had a hematoma post shockwave? So we gotta keep that in mind. Sometimes you almost forget because we do so many shockwaves, it almost gets to be routine until that patient calls having pain and you kind of think, well, you know, it's, is it stent related? Well, maybe it's not. You better be careful to screen them a little better. So flank pain, abdomen pain, those are the common complaints. Sometimes there'll be bruising seen, fractures, rib fractures. You know, if it's a bullet, you might be able to see where it went in and out or a knife wound. Uh, who needs to be evaluated? Well, anybody with gross hematuria, all penetrating injuries, blunt with microscopic hematuria and shock. Be careful with children because they don't tend to go into shock until they lose a lot of their blood. And blunt trauma with no shock and just microhematuria doesn't need to be worked up. How do we work renal trauma up? Our friend the CAT scanner, best tool we have in our toolbox. 10 minute delays, we'll get good images of the kidneys and know what's going on. Um, Cysto retrogrades can be done in the OR to, to, to visualize ureters and things and kidneys. Um, IVP can even be done on the table. But anyway, here's our CAT scan, and here's our nice healthy kidney that white is the IV contrast being absorbed. And then here's our kidney. Uh, there's obviously no blood going into that. So CAT scan seems to be nice for evaluation. Here again is the Nice normal kidney, and here's the poor guy that took a beating. Pretty clear to everyone, right? I mean, you can see that's not normal. So, renal trauma conservative uh, management is done for most patients. We have about 90 to 95 percent of these injuries that are just minor. But in major trauma, it's going to be surgery. Most of these are going to be uh, other things that are going to cause surgery anyway. So, Kind of based on the grades, you can make decisions on who needs to be explored, who doesn't. We always have to make sure that they have a good working contralateral kidney. Some may not even have a second kidney. Uh, could have been somebody who donated a kidney to a family member or congenitally wasn't born with two. So important to have a good second kidney working. Complications, secondary, like uh, hemorrhage, extravasation, that can form abscesses and most concerning would be our friend renal failure that we don't want to see.